the year is 2001, only a few months after the 9-11 attacks. The US Army had a strange message that appeared on a computer. Your security system is crap. I am solo. I will continue to disrupt at the highest levels. I was absolutely shocked at the lack of security. I left messages on almost every system administrator's desktop. This man is Gary McKinnon. And between February 2001 and March 2002, he hacked into 97 US government computers at the US Army, the Navy, NASA, the Department of Defense, and the US Air Force. He was also accused of leaving 300 computers at a US Naval Weapons Station unusable. He looked around the computer for months, cracking passwords and copying files. The US government even accused him of taking down the entire network of the US Army in Washington DC, causing 2,000 computers to be shut down for days, with estimated damages being around $700,000. While he clearly was a clever hacker, he wasn't as good when covering his tracks, and soon he was traced to an apartment in London. And on the 19th of March 2002, just after 8am, the United Kingdom's National High Tech Crime Unit arrested the 36-year-old Gary McKinnon on behalf of the United States Justice Department. Paul McNulty, the US Attorney, says Mr. McKinnon is charged with the biggest military computer hack of all time. Gary McKinnon faced extradition and a potential prison sentence of 70 years and fines of up to $1.75 million. Gary would confess to the hack and explain the reasonings for doing it. It was this obsession with UFOs. Gary was convinced that the government was hiding knowledge about UFOs and had planned to find and release the information for everyone to see. He claims his presence in the network was detected when he downloaded a photo from NASA's Johnson Space Center. He believed the photo to be a UFO. On the YouTube channel, History, Gary claims to have a gold mine of information. According to McKinnon, he unearthed a secret US military program that existed entirely in space. I found the spreadsheet was actually titled in the column non-terrestrial officers. Gary McKinnon was also diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, a form of autism. People with Asperger's are often highly intelligent. Researchers have studied a possible link between autism and engineering due to many people with autism having outstanding knowledge and a keen interest in engineering, space and technology. There have been an inordinate number of young men with Asperger's who have gotten into trouble with the law, says Ray Paul, an autism expert. She also says, it's difficult for them to make moral decisions that may come more easily to others. McKinnon's lawyers would argue in court that his criminal behaviours were a result of his condition and ask for him to be judged with that in mind. With millions of dollars and his entire life in prison on the line, the stakes could not have been higher. While Gary took years to develop computer skills at such a high level that he could hack into top secret information, you can develop similar abilities in a fraction of the time with an online certificate like Course Careers. Course Careers is perfect for anyone looking to get hired fast in the IT industry. Whether you want to get into cybersecurity, cloud computing, machine learning, or another IT niche, Course Careers will help you land an IT position. Course Careers will give you the proper foundation and get into a level of hacking similar to Gary's. If you click the link below, you can get a free introduction course and sign up to find out how to start your career in the IT industry without any prior degree or experiences. Plus, using my link will get you $50 off the full paid course. Gary McKinnon was born on February 10th, 1966 in Glasgow, Scotland. He was fascinated with space from a young age. He would ask technical questions to his parents, like what's the distance between planets and the scientific names of stars? It was the kind of stuff a toddler didn't usually talk about, McKinnon's mother said. Gary got his first computer at the age of 14. It was an Atari 400, which turned out to be a very capable device for learning to write code. He taught himself to write code and made his first video game. It was of course set in outer space. McKinnon would join a community called the British UFO Research Association, where he would meet people just like him, very interested in space. Gary ended up leaving school at the age of 17 to work in tech support and would bounce around jobs in the industry. As he started to build his computer skills and grow his interest in UFOs, Gary started to poke around parts of the internet to see what he could find. Gary was known online as Solo and was searching around the US government computer system. Solo's attempts to access the government computers would seem rather simple when comparing to today's standards. 
There was the basic dial-up modem that provided a 56 kilobit per second connection speed. Gary used it to scan a vulnerable 139 port, used for sharing printers, files, and plenty of other things. He wrote a script that he claimed to allow him to scan up to 65,000 machines for passwords in under eight minutes. To his surprise, when he ran the script, he found that many federal workers had failed to change the default password on their computers. I was amazed at the lack of security, Gary said. He moved from one access point to another, running the same scan. And it didn't take long for him to form a long list of machines with high level administrative accounts. Next, he would install a software called Remotely Anywhere, which allowed him to control the computers over the internet. He scavenged any data or documents that he could find. He would try and avoid detection at the beginning by navigating NASA's network at night. The nighttime was when strange computer activities were less likely to be noticed. He was also able to monitor all activity on the computers, so as soon as he noticed someone log in, he could immediately log out. However, it didn't take him long to grow in confidence and get sloppy with his network snooping. He would leave notes on the victim's computers, saying, your security is crap. But in his hunt for any evidence of UFOs, did he find anything? Well, according to Gary, yes, he saw images of what happened to look like extraterrestrial spaceships. The images were kept in Building 8 of Johnson Space Center. Donahue, a former NASA employee who worked as a design illustrator, announced several incidents that happened while working where there was evidence of UFOs on images. While discussing the images of the UFO with the technical worker, she asked him, What are you going to do with this piece of information? And he said, we always airbrush these out before we sell them to the public. So they're pes pesky little creatures uh, appearing on this uh, photograph they wanted to get rid of. While Gary was looking around the network of the Space Center, Gary found a folder named Unfiltered that contained strange images of satellites with strange looking spacecraft that was shaped like a cigar with a clear dome on top. I had remote control of their desktop and by adjusting it to a 4-bit color and low screen resolution, I was able to briefly see one of these images. It was a silvery cigar shaped object with geodesic spheres on either side. There was no visible seams or rivets, there's no reference to the size of the object and the picture was taken presumptuously by a satellite looking down on it, Gary said in an interview. So, where are these images? Well, Gary tried to download an image from the Space Center's network, but the high resolution image was taking too long to download. And during the slow download time, someone at NASA noticed this intrusion. They took over control and stopped connection with McKinnon's network, stopping the image download. They had huge high resolution images stored in the picture files. They had filtered and unfiltered, or processed and unprocessed files, Gary said. These images weren't the only things he found. As he searched further in classified military documents, he discovered a classified personnel roster that was titled Non-Terrestrial Officers. It contained an Excel spreadsheet that had names and ranks of people working in the US Air Force who were not registered anywhere else. Also, it contained information about ship-to-ship -ship transfer. None of these were ocean-going ships. It was astounding. They're not Navy, they're not in the Army, and not even Air Force. So to me, I was thinking there must be an off-planet Space Force, or Space Fleet, at least. Before he tried to download the image and got removed from the server, he would stumble upon files that detailed the suppression of free energy technologies that had the capability of revolutionizing the world. It appeared to him that the government was hiding advanced energy sources that could provide a sustainable and environmentally friendly alternative to fossil fuels. When Gary was removed from the server, he believed he was detected because he logged in at the wrong time. Also, leaving notes in the computer would make them aware of his presence. Then, the government discovered the remotely anywhere software on the machines and traced it to his email address. On March 19th, 2002, his mother got a call. It was Gary. I've been arrested, he said, and he told him not to worry. The UK National High Tech Crime Unit had arrested him under the Computer Misuse Act. Gary found out this carried a sentence of six months community service. I don't need to get a lawyer, he said, unaware of the events that were about to unfold. This is a brief timeline of what unfolded over the next 10 years. Between March 19th and August 8th, McKinnon was interviewed by the UK's National High Tech Crime Unit at the request of the US government. And on October 31st, the District Court of New Jersey issued a warrant for Gary's arrest before Paul McNulty, 
Paul McNulty is the US Attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia. And on the 12th of November, he said, Mr. McKinnon is charged with the biggest military computer hack of all time. The US wanted Gary McKinnon locked up. On August 12th, 2004, the District Court in the US issued another warrant for Gary's arrest. And on the 7th of October, the US government filed a request for his extradition. On March 31st, 2005, another warrant was issued and officers from Scotland Yard Extradition Unit briefly arrested him at his home in London. They did this under an extradition treaty that was made after the attacks of 9-11 to help the prosecution of suspected terrorists. The US Department of Justice didn't care about the motives behind these attacks. They claimed the damage of the attacks was severe. He was charged with causing over $700,000 in damages, deleting over 1,300 operational system files and user accounts. Apparently, his deletion of critical files crashed the US Army's network in Washington DC for three days. Along with the large amount of money he was charged with, he also faced a potential prison sentence of 70 years. When the media got attention of this story, people started to protest that the punishment was too excessive. The woman who saw McKinnon on TV suggested that he should get a psychiatric examination and has exhibited signs of Asperger's syndrome. At the time, he wasn't diagnosed and his mother was unfamiliar with the condition, but she looked into it and decided to link it with her son's unusual behaviour over the years and it all started to piece together. McKinnon agreed to be evaluated by one of the world's foremost experts, Simon Baron Cohen, Director of Autism Research Centre at the University of Cambridge. Baron Cohen said it would make sense that he would be a skilled hacker. He found that over 50% of people with Asperger's have an obsession in technology, physics and space. After the examination, he was officially diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome. Moving to 2006, the Home Secretary at the time, John Reed, signed an order for McKinnon to be extradited to the US. In 2007, McKinnon would lose an attempt to appeal against his extradition at the High Courts. In January 2009, McKinnon wins position in the High Courts to seek review of charges and over a month later, the Crown Prosecution Service, the CPS, an answer will not bring charges against him in Britain. McKinnon would then make a bid to the High Court into allowing a trial in the UK, challenging the CPS's refusal to sanction a trial in Britain. He didn't want to be taken to the US. He wanted to be trial in Britain. Tory leader at the time, David Cameron, joins the growing cause for a review of the extradition laws, saying, McKinnon is a vulnerable young man, and I see no compassion in sending him thousands of miles away from his home and loved ones to face trial. The following month, McKinnon's mother speaks out to Secretary Alan Johnson for linking her son to the 9-11 terror attacks and the deaths of nearly 3,000 US citizens. Also the pop star Sting was a supporter of Gary and said, it is a travesty of human rights that Gary McKinnon finds himself in this dreadful situation. The British government is prepared to hand over this vulnerable man without reviewing the evidence. Members of Parliament got behind him, one member being Andrew McKinlay, who ended up resigning after McKinnon lost an appeal to the British courts. McKinlay did not think his fellow PMs were doing enough to protect McKinnon from being extradited when he was far from a terrorist. The diagnosis of Asperger's did not deter the US government from pursuing extradition. McKinnon wanted to be trialled for his crimes in a British court, asking the UK government to stop the extradition. In 2010, the UK Home Secretary decided to review the case. She's also arranging for an independent medical expert to evaluate McKinnon. Baron Cohen says the government may be making a life or death decision. After extensively interviewing McKinnon, they found him to be prone to depression and suicide. If Gary McKinnon is sent to the US, he said, I fear he will kill himself. So at this point, Britain have reviewed the case for themselves and have refused to extradite McKinnon to the US due to his medical condition and the risk of him not receiving a fair trial. And eventually, in 2012, the case against him was dropped. Gary McKinnon is now 57 and runs a small company that specializes in search optimization. He's still not allowed to leave the country. And at the end of 2023, it was announced that this incredible story of Gary McKinnon is going to be turned into a feature film. Shooting for the film is due to start very soon. A lot of people over the years were wondering if what he claimed to see in the images was real. Were there actually UFOs or something far more sinister? Or maybe it was just some sort of hypothetical game. 
without any hard evidence, we will never know. However, over the years, more people are speaking out on instances like this. Former Pentagon employee, David Grush, testified before Congress. The US government possesses unidentified crashed extraterrestrial craft and non-human bodies, and has been retrieving UFOs for decades. As more government workers talk about instances with extraterrestrial beings or UFOs, Gary McKinnon's sightings become a lot more likely to be true. Thank you for watching, and subscribe if you enjoyed.